There we go. And it is 10 o'clock. So um, I think we probably ought to get started. Thanks for joining us. Um, today, we're going to be hearing from um, Melissa Dagny, who is one of the instructional designers in uh, she primarily serves the uh, health profession schools. And she's going to be talking to us about um, uh, the modules. And she and I were talking before you guys came on because I had to figure out how to introduce her and the topic because I my depth of knowledge about Canvas right now is about here. Um, but it seems to me that knowing modules is kind of the heart of the matter, that it is the basic uh, kind of backbone of how things are organized. Uh, Melissa assured me that I was not crazy and said, you know, if she was gonna like say two things to know, it was about modules and grading. So um, you, are, uh, you are here, for, you know, if you wanna learn uh, everything, that's great. If you wanna learn just some central key things, you are in the right place. <laughs> Melissa, I'm gonna turn it over to you, okay? Thank you, Susan. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us today. I am gonna talk about modules and pages like she introduced and I'm gonna share my screen and jump straight in. So you should now be seeing what I'm seeing. And we are looking at my training course in Canvas that I put together a bunch of modules and a few pages for all these examples. And basically, I'm going to start off by walking you through some examples and comparing to Blackboard a little bit to kind of see where you were and where we're going. So this first page, I've got a welcome. And it's just got a banner on the page with my you know, outcomes for the day that we're going to compare Blackboard to Canvas. We're going to talk about how to create and edit pages and build modules. And I'm going to click Next. It's going to take me to explaining a little bit about what modules and pages are. So imagine you're organizing your garage and you've got just tons of stuff and you're gonna wanna put it in different boxes. Well, modules are literal boxes where you put your stuff inside of Canvas. A page is just one of your many belongings. It goes inside of the box along with anything else that you plan to include for your students. So keeping that example in mind, I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna to click to the next one, which is gonna show a Blackboard item. And it doesn't really have much information because it's just for an example. But what I'm gonna do is split my screen and show you guys a Blackboard course on the left and this Canvas course on the right. So I don't know how many of you use learning modules in Canvas, but that, I mean, Blackboard, but that was an option to do a learning module. Most people though commonly used a folder and then put some stuff inside of a folder. So I took this Blackboard example and I copied it straight over into Canvas. So you're gonna see side by side what you would have on the left versus what you are going to be getting on the right. So if I click on my modules link to show you the overall view, I've gone through this first section, so I'm going to collapse it. And the second section, mod, the Blackboard Learning Module 1, and it contains A materials, corresponds to the very first line that's at the top of the Blackboard. See so how the, the name of each of them matches exactly because I copied all the information. So whatever you had in Blackboard is gonna be called the same thing in Canvas, it's copied over. And if I click in Blackboard, it's gonna expand my options. And I give me just a second to get that to open up. So, come on little mouse, there, where, ah, sorry you guys. It's so small on my screen, I'm, I'm having some fun there. Okay, so what we're looking at, just a place to put information in a file, just like I had on this side in Canvas. So let's take a look. 
students had this file in Blackboard and now they'll still have a file in Canvas. Pretty similar. That's how you're gonna organize. We're gonna go back. And I'm gonna show you each one of these, how I've got information in each one. So three items here with a subfolder. So I've got this folder here is the same thing here. This Blackboard file C, same here. But instead of having another folder in Canvas, it has a, a subheader. And then the items that are inside this folder are right here indented. So it's gonna do that automatically for you if you put your content folders within folders this is the type of module you'll automatically get in Canvas. Okay, so now that you kind of see what things look like over in Blackboard versus what they're going to be looking like in Canvas, I'm gonna show you what would happen if we don't use modules. If you just don't get the boxes for all of your content, what would happen in a Canvas course? So this particular example here, is the exact same course I'm showing you today without modules put together. I've got this welcome page that I also have in my course with modules, but students don't have anywhere to go. There's no next or previous button. They have to go and figure out what's next and where am I gonna find it? So in my course with the module, it's gonna take me to a next button and give them the next piece of information. But in my example with no navigation, I'm gonna to have to go to the pages link. I'm gonna to have to click view all pages, and then I'm gonna to have to find where is the next page. And it's called what are modules and pages? That's what I'm looking for, and here it is. And again, no next or previous buttons. Students don't have anywhere to go. They would have to find the place you put the next piece of information. Over here with modules, I just click next and it's gonna take me to the next item. So really modules are the boxes that give your course structure and they help keep your students on track to tell them what they need to do and the order that they should be doing it. So I'm going to get us back into my course with modules because that's where we wanna be. And we basically have looked at the introduction pages. We've looked at some examples of how your content will come in straight from Blackboard. And that's these. And then we're gonna skip down to considerations for designing pages. Now I've got some information in here. So we've talked about, you can put stuff in the boxes and we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you exactly how you do that in just a minute. But we're gonna talk about how to get some stuff on a page. So a page in Canvas, you can come in and you can click view all and you can see I've got lots of them. I can also, click the plus page button to add a new one. So we're just gonna click to add a new one and start from scratch to see what that process is like. So as in everything in Canvas that you will create, you'll first be prompted to give it a title. And I'm gonna call it example page or example new page. That will help me identify it later when I wanna delete it. Okay. So you add a title, you don't do any formatting, it does all of that for you. So you just type in this box. Below, you've got the content box where you get to do anything that you want. You can add text, copy and paste from somewhere. You can upload images to your course and insert them on this page. You can embed videos, you can do a table of data, really, all of the content creation that you wanna put on a page about anything you wanna make it about is gonna happen here. So what I'm going to do is grab some blank text. And I'm gonna do that over here. I've just got a text generator. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna paste it. 
And you can use your keyboard shortcuts, of course, as well. I'm just using it on the screen for the example purposes. So when you copy and paste information into Canvas, um, it sometimes can look a little funny. And that means it's got some formatting attached to it that might not be what you want. There's this great button here in the rich content editor called clear formatting. And if you select the text and push that button, any odd font size, bold, italics, anything that's going on there, it's gonna wipe that out and clean it up for you. And this is important because when your materials come over from Blackboard, they will oftentimes not, maybe not have the same exact text that you're wanting it to have. It just isn't an exact match and you might wanna clean it up. So here you can see I've got just like in Word or any other word processing, I've got options. I can um, click the edit button and I can see that I've got undo and cut, copy paste, like the normal stuff. I've also got um, being able to view this window in full screen or seeing the HTML code, which is a little advanced and you don't really need to worry about doing it. But if you're ever curious, it's possible. Um, I've got insert, which is to do links, images, and other um, items. If I want to embed a video or if I want to make a horizontal line, I've got formatting choices, just like you would anytime you're typing in another program. I've also got ways I can do different types. I can make headings. So when we're talking about accessible, friendly pages, using our headings to break up the information. I can do all sorts of um, block quotes to make it look a little different. I just have a lot of control. So let's take a look at some of the things we can do. Okay, so I'm going to put a, an introduction paragraph here at the top. And then below that, I want to make, um, this is going to be my second heading um, for a topic. And then below that, I'm also going to have another paragraph and I want to make a numbered list of item one, two, and three. So now that I've got this very plain and boring text on the screen, I can select it and I can choose. These are all of your shortcut buttons for the items I was showing you in these menu choices. So I can click heading two and it will change that style for me automatically. I can put an extra space if I want to make white space. I can select these items and add numbers or maybe I just want to make them bullet points. Um, I can also, we'll copy this, paste another one, and I can indent the information. All of the things that you want to do to get that information there. So wherever you put your cursor, you can insert a picture. So you can either upload a new one, you can grab some from course images, is where I've got all mine hiding. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to insert this checkpoint. And it's going to put it right there on the page and then I'm going to close the tab that popped out and click the image and then I'll have some options to edit. So when I click the options, I get another pop out tab over on the right and I can change that this is um, important flag checkpoint for my alt text. If there was something I was teaching with that image for screen readers, I'd want to be able to have something descriptive in case I have a student who's using one. But I've decided this is just decorative. So I'm going to click the box for decorative and now screen readers are going to ignore it. Then I say, oh, this is way too big, right? I'm going to change it to a 50 point. Uh-oh. Undo. Control Z, your favorite button. At least it's my favorite. Try that again. 
and then click done to apply the changes. And so now I have this small icon image where I wanted to put it, but I decided instead of being on the left, I'm gonna move it over to the right. So I simply come over here to my alignment options and I pick the right and it moves it on over. You're most likely going to need to make some hyperlinks. There's going to be two kinds, the external or course link. Oh, and I'm so excited. You guys, my AC just finally kicked off in this room and it's now super silent. Okay, so external links. It's going to be anywhere outside of your Canvas course. So let's say, for example, I want to go and I want to send my students over here to this you know, text generator, I'm going to copy the URL. Come on back over here and pull up that external link again and paste it right there on the page. Click done. And now this word is a hyperlink to that website. That's only one way though. Now we're going to say I want to send students over to the discussion board because I want them to talk about the content that they're reading. I can select that text and choose a course link. So that's anything inside this Canvas course. So I've got all of the options pop up right here. I'm gonna choose my discussions and I'm going to pick sample graded discussions. They're gonna get a grade for it. And then I can close that. And now there is a link to my discussion board. Probably going to need to know how to embed a video because that is a really common option. So I'm going to come over here to YouTube. I've got a video picked out. There's going to be a few different ways you can do this. This is if you're already on YouTube, you're looking at something and you say, oh my gosh, this is great for my course. I'm going to share it. I'm going to get the embed code. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come over here back to my section that I'm going to put the video where my cursor is. The cloud embed button pops open a box. I paste that and click submit. That's one way that I can embed the video on the page. The next way, maybe you're over here and you don't want to take up all the space of embedding. You want students to just use a link. That's a possibility. You can choose share and copy the URL and you can paste it right here on the page and it will change in just a minute i'm going to click save and it will put this little thumbnail with the url when you copy the url onto the page so you've got two different ways for them to watch that video i'm going to come back here and i'm going to edit my page again because i'm not done Come back down here to the bottom. Now let's say I'm in Canvas, I'm working on my course, and I want to add a YouTube video on a topic, but I don't know which one. If I come up here and choose from the plugin option, these are all my external tools, I can choose view all. YouTube happens to be at the top of my list because I use it most often, but there's a bunch of different tools. YouTube is going to let me search right here, course design, and press enter. And now I've got, I'm searching YouTube from within Canvas. Once I find the video I'm looking for, maybe I'm like, oh, learn graphic design at home, fantastic. I'm gonna oh, click on that. You can see more information and I'm going to click embed. Yep, that's the one I want and click save. So you've got three different ways you can add a YouTube video to a page. Now, we've basically, sh I've shown you a bunch of ways to edit the text. Do you guys have any questions? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause, I'm going to pull up the chat, make sure we're all good. Oh, it's pretty quiet out there. All right, well, you guys stop me if you want to see something if I'm not showing you all of that you're looking for, but I'm going to edit one more time. I've got kind of a messy page here, so I'm like, you know what, 
I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. I can delete. I can, oh, I want this to be bold. And really, um, I don't really like this way of adding the YouTube video. So I'm gonna take that one off and I'm gonna delete that one at the bottom too. Now I'm gonna insert a horizontal line and maybe I'm gonna have my next heading and then some more text and I can add another heading and press save. So this will give you an idea when I'm scrolling what your students would see here. You have total control over how you lay out this information, which is a lot more freedom than you had in Blackboard. So Canvas really allows a lot of creativity with getting your students content information. So we got a question to repeat the last option to search in YouTube. And absolutely, I'm gonna click edit so that I pull up my rich content editor and I'm going to put my cursor wherever it is I'm wanting this video, which I'm gonna to go to the bottom of the page. And I'm going to um, go to the plugin. It looks like an electric plug that goes into the wall. And my option that I last used is always at the top. So you see YouTube here automatically, but if you haven't used YouTube, you won't see that and you'll wanna view all and then choose YouTube. And so the search box comes up, anything, anything. So we can learn about, you know, the earth, something. I like this video, I choose embed. And it sticks it right on the page and I click save. Now, once I'm fully done editing, and this is actually what I want students to see, I always need to make sure that I publish the piece that I've created. So every layer of Canvas across the board is going to have item publication. You publish the item, it goes into a module, you publish the whole module, and then you publish the entire course. So it's layers of access. If you've got a couple of pages you're wanting to make some edits, you don't have them published, your students can't see them, you make those changes. So I'm gonna publish this page. Now any students in my course would be able to see it. And you know, I realize I have a typo. So I'm gonna go edit the page make my change and then I can click the button at the bottom of the page to notify users that this content has changed. And I'm going to say this, it's a great feature, but I would recommend using it sparingly. Um, you don't want to, students just get a little ruffled if you make a lot of changes on them. Um, and really, it can be difficult to know what about the content changed. So if you're just doing, you know, a slight adding the word the, you don't have to tell anybody. But if you've got something a little more substantial, you definitely want to be able to notify them. So you've got some other features here, right? At the below doing all this great creativity, you've got some, some buttons. You've got your to view your keyboard shortcut. And then the second button you have is the accessibility checker. And most of us are not accessibility experts. It's, you know, uh, it can be, complicated with technology to make sure everything is set up properly for screen readers. So this button is going to do it all for you. I'm going to push the button and it tells me that I have one issue and that my image file name should not be the name of the file. It's not descriptive enough. Now I checked decorative, but then I had an oops and I clicked in the wrong spot and I lost it all. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to my image and I'm going to click options. And I'm going to say, nope, that really was decorative and click done to save. And then I'm going to click that button again. And oh, it doesn't notice. I really did it. Double check. Yep. I'm going to try saving. I'm going to click again, edit. And my accessibility button still doesn't like that. So it's not noticing that I'm telling it it's decorative. And so I can say flag and get it to stop telling me I'm wrong. 
but it is useful in pointing out if you've got something serious. That, per that particular problem wasn't very serious. So now um, you've got a couple of options down here at the bottom. You can make your pages editable by teachers and students or anyone in the course. So if you ever used wikis in Blackboard, this is the equivalent. Um, it basically allows any number of people to come in and contribute to something you're putting on the page. So if you wanted to do, you know, hot topics in your class and you want to have it all on one page, students can come in, they can edit, they can add the hot topic they found, everybody can scroll down and read about it. So this is where you would set that up. I'm going to leave mine that it's only teachers and I'm going to click save. And this is my sample course. But that's not the best part. The best part is that you can actually get some pre-formatted pages and use them. So this is the beauty of Canvas is that we have a commons that we can get materials from other people who have shared. So what I did is I went to the commons, which is this button over here on the left. There will be an entire training on that by itself. but. I went over to the comments before the training session and I picked some stuff that I liked and I copied it into my course down here, these four examples. And we're going to start with the problematic design first. This page is really pretty. I love the fonts. Um, I love the colors. It's just got a lot going on. It's fun. But if I click edit on this page, and I run this accessibility checker button, it's got nine issues. And so I recognize that if I don't really want to address these nine issues, this particular template may not be the best one for me to use because it's a lot of work. So even though I like how it looks, I'm going to cancel and not use this example. But I will go to the next page. And this one you'll see it also looks really nice. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see a little more at a time. As I scroll down, you can kind of see this layout. It's pretty fancy. Well, if I click edit, you'll find, I'm going to make this the whole screen, that I can go in and edit the text. Ask for help when you need it. I want to add an exclamation point. Maybe I want to change this image out with a different image. Um, maybe I just want to edit all of the information that's on this page in various ways before I escape to come back to real life and push save. So that's the first design. The second one I found is a little more simple. It's kind of what you saw in my example page that I was doing, where it's just got various headings used and other um, text formatting. And then this last one, which is also another pretty straightforward. I'm going to click edit here. And we'll see. So we've got a banner page that's right here across the top. We've got some icon images that are very small. Um, maybe I decide that I want a little more white space. So I'm going to press enter and I'm going to change this to a paragraph so that the space isn't so big. And then I'm going to give a little more white space here. And I'm going to check my accessibility checker and it too says stop using the file name for your image. So I would address that problem. But for the most part, it's reasonable. It's a good template and I press save. So if there aren't any questions about how you can edit and manipulate a page, we're going to I'm going to show you how to put all the stuff you've now created into a module. So we just went through all of these examples and now I have a let's build a module empty box. Pretty straightforward. It's got a plus sign on the right hand side. I click the plus and this pop up is going to say, what do you want to add? I can choose any of these from the drop down. So an assignment, if I choose assignment, I can either create a new one if I haven't made it already. 
or I can choose from one that I already own. So I'm gonna do the sample assignment at the bottom and I'm gonna say add. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna change to quiz and I'm gonna add a sample quiz. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to keep going down my list. I can add a file. So I've got files uploaded to the files area of my course. I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to choose the accelerated English document. I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to add some pages and you can add more than one at a time. So I've got an introduction page I want to add. I've got learning materials and activities I want to add, and I've got a review of topics I want to add. So all of those popped up in my module. And last but not least, you can do discussions. You can make a text header. So let's say um, you just want to chunk some information inside of a module. Choose text, and you can type um, anything you want in your text header and add that. And then the last two you have, you can choose an external URL or an external tool. I am actually going to show you the external URL because there's a trick that somebody asked me about this week and I wanna share that forward. So when you paste this link into the URL box, and you give it a page name, like I want to say um, this is um, a text generator or um, let's say text placeholders. And I want to load in a new tab. The reason why you want to check the load in a new tab box is because without it, Canvas tries to open your URL within Canvas's window and that can create a very odd environment for students to look at. It's not as appealing. I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna create it again and I'm going to show you what happens when you do not have load in a new tab. Right, and I'm gonna add that. And so we'll take a look at exactly what that looks like. And then that last option you had was external tool. And these are the same as the plugins. You can go, you can find YouTube. You've got a variety of them here. Um, and I'm going to say, I want to do YouTube. I'm going to search. I'm going to select my same. And we're going to see what this looks like. So I scroll down. I want it to load a new tab or I don't. I'm not sure. We're going to try it without first. Okay. So now that I've done all of this, you can see I've got some green checks and I've got some non green checks. So this is the publish status of each of these items. If I do not publish these students cannot see them. So I have to keep that in mind. Now let's say I unpublish the whole module and all of my items except that one, that was a file. So it was, it's more particular with your files. So let's say I've got some checked, some not checked, but I want them all. If I publish the module, it will turn everything in the module on for me. So it's just a shortcut. Okay, so now that I've added all of this stuff, I can rearrange it by dragging and dropping. So I wanna put my learning materials together. And then they're going to do their sample assignment and sample quiz. And I decided I don't want this text header because it doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to say yes, Canvas, I'm sure. And then I'm going to put this document here. And my review goes last. Okay, well, so now that I have all of this in place, maybe it's not as clear and I want to indent, increase indent for the sub items that go underneath.
And so now I see I've got three pages of information and then the learning materials has some sub items. Maybe that's how I wanna do it. So now when I click introduction, you'll see I've got a page that's a sample module introducing a topic to my students with learning objectives. Maybe I've included a pre-assessment. I click next. Students will see the learning materials. I can have things listed here. Any of the extra module items will be displayed in order. So this one is to open in a new window. And now they're seeing this website over here versus the next way it's got the website opened on the page. So just know that if you love this and it works for what you're doing, it's great. But if it looks odd and it doesn't do what you want it to do, open in a new window and they'll have full access over in a separate tab. The next one. I've got my YouTube video and I can push play right here on the page. Next, I've got a sample assignment, then a sample quiz, and then my review of the topic before it ends. So we've covered how to make a page, how to get creative with the page, how to put stuff in a module, and then you can control the behavior of your modules. So these dots, the three dot menus to the right is how you see more options. We did a couple of things with removing, um, you can duplicate, you can copy them to another course, um, and some other things per item. But you also have a menu for the entire module. So if you follow the gray bar at the top, you can edit and you can move them around and you can also delete and copy the whole thing. So I am actually gonna edit and I'm gonna show you, I want this module to be locked until Monday morning. I wanna keep my students on track per the schedule. I don't want the module to open until it's ready. So they do only the pieces of the course that I've set up at a time. I can set this for 8 a.m. on the 22nd. Make sure you change it to a.m., click done. And then when I update the module, that will apply and students will not be able to see it until that date and time. And then let's say they need to do the course introduction before they move on to the rest of the modules. So I'm going to add a prerequisite and I'm going to say they have to do the overview first. So until they do the overview, they will not be able to access this module. And then I'm going to add a requirement that they must complete everything in sequential order. And then I'm going to say update. And it says that I've changed the progression requirements for an active course and students may already be in progress, but that's just because I've been playing with it. So I'm going to say continue because it's okay. And now you'll see that it says prerequisites and it tells them what that prerequisite is and that it's locked until March 22nd. So I can go to the top of the page and click my student view. And students will also see that it's grayed out and that they have certain stipulations. Okay, so I'm gonna leave student view and head on back to the last module in my course, which is really just leaving time for everyone to ask questions if you have anything or if you'd like me to demonstrate further. Oh, do I recommend YouTube videos to open in a new tab? Honestly, I think YouTube videos work best on a page, embedded on a page, rather than on um, the surface of a module this way, simply because there's usually some context that you're asking students to watch a video and you won't be able to really set that stage or talk about the video 
in text unless you put it on a page. So that's my recommendation. It's usually, I mean, it always depends on what your circumstances are, but that's a good question. If I embed a video, do I have to worry about size limits on the course? That's a really great question. The beauty of it is, no, you do not. So if it's embedded, it's living over in a different place and you've just created a way for students to see it. It's not taking up any space in your course. So functionally, it's a link, but it's just prettier? Exactly. And I would say that is exactly what embed means. It's a link, but it's prettier. And I can show you in my files for this course, all that stuff that you saw me doing, it's not taking up hardly anything. And I have an unusually large course size. I don't know why I'll have to fix that. We, don't, we have two gig size, which is plenty of space. Guys are quiet. Morning crowds are always quiet. <laughs> I'm I'm at pharmacy and I'm thinking, gosh, I need some coffee. <laughs> okay, so great. Um, not a lot of questions. I'm going to take that as what we've looked at is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, you look for a button or a menu and you find the thing that you're trying to do. Um, we really, I feel like modules and pages, as important as they are, they did a good job making them simple to use. Um, if you run into any trouble, of course, we're always here to help. So make sure you reach out and let us know. I will say, um, gosh, there is, I'm trying to think of what other connections I could show you that's maybe a little bit more. So if I go to my pages, and I'm going to look and I'm going to say, um, maybe if I edit this one. Yeah. Oh, let me try adding a new one. Let's see what we got here. Add a page. Um, no, you know, the immersive reader is a really great great tool. I'm going to put this on a real page of something that is and so when you click the immersive reader button, um, this is, you know, going to be a very um, interesting interactive way of how students can can engage with your content. So this is a really cool tool. Um, got a question here for see this presentation again. Um, absolutely. I am teaching this one two more times this week. Somebody have the schedule available. Uh, <laughs> and I'm pulling up my calendar as quick as it'll load. Okay, let's see. Actually, I'll let you do that then. Yes, let's see. We have no, this was your last one, Melissa. So, yeah. So this was my last one until yes, this. Year. But it will okay. live, it will live in infamy on the on the YouTube page that I just posted. And if you look at your calendar invite, the link for the YouTube page is on there. Yeah. 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 It'll be posted. Series get in the summer too. You can watch it in slow motion. Uh -huh. Okay. Um. Recalling previous session on files, a little fuzzy on the difference between pages and files. That's a good question. Okay, so what is the difference between pages and files? So in your course, pages are going to be like um, a journal, a blank space for you to craft whatever you want. Your files is like your folders on your computer. It's where you save your PDFs, your Word documents, your PowerPoints, whatever it is you're working with. So if you have a document on Word, for example, this file I have for Accelerated English, this is a document, it goes in my files. 
I've uploaded it here and then I link that file onto a page for students to be able to see it. Um, I've got a lot of control when it comes to how my files behave. So if I click the menu on the right hand side, I can um, download, rename them, move them, delete them. So there's a lot of choices here. If I click the publish button, I have even more. So you can unpublish so no one can see it. Maybe you've got a test key you want to upload to save it with your course, but you don't want anybody to ever have a chance of seeing it. Um, that's definitely important. Um, if you only want students with the link to be able to see it. So for whatever reason, you only want to share it with a small group, you could select this option and be able to do that. And then you've got scheduled student availability. So if you have um, test reviews, so you have a test on Friday, you don't want the review to um, you know, be released until Thursday, the day before the test for them to go over it, or maybe you want to share some sort of explanation document after they've taken the test, you would time release and you just would select the date and time that you want that to work. So I'm going to leave that as published. And we've got basically um, folders you can create. So you can create a folder to keep your files organized, which is you know highly recommended. I've created the Blackboard course copy folder, and this is where I put the things that I used for examples. Wow. And then over on my page, I'm going to go back to my example new page and I'm going to edit. And I'm going to add that course file that I showed you. Change links to files in the drop down menu. And then course files is what I'm looking at. And that accelerated English document, I'm going to click on that. And that's the one I wanted to give to students. So I click save. And now that file is linked onto my page so that students can preview or download it. And that works just like you know any other download in your browser. That's a good question between files and pages. Hey, thanks, Melissa. Absolutely. Okay, so back in my modules page, just to give you guys an idea of the flexibility, I can drag and drop modules into different orders. So anywhere that your cursor turns into that four sided arrow, you can drag the whole thing. I can, as I've already shown, rearrange my stuff that's inside of a module. I can also, on the right hand menus, say to move a module. And then it will let me do this with a little bit more um, precision than dragging and dropping. So I know if I'm working on a smaller display or I don't have my mouse and I'm just using the touchpad, Sometimes, you know, it just can be difficult to drag and drop. So I can instruct it that I want to move this module after this next module and it will move it there for me without having to drag and drop. So you've got multiple ways that you can manipulate the information on the screen. Um, we also, um, you can look at Commons Favorites. So I don't have any favorites, but if I had been saving them while I was over there, that pops up. So easy access, whatever you're wanting to have in your course. Um, we can, if I had student progress, we could view their progress here. And I can collapse all of them with the touch of this button.
that that about covers really everything there is to know about pages and modules. So I'm going to stick around, but if you don't have any more questions, we will call it a wrap. Melissa, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Yeah, we really appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day, Miss. Likewise. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Absolutely. Yeah. Is it, I got to stop the recording. <laughs>